this video we'll talk about Bayes' theorem as a very brief introduction to a different way to think about probability. Bayes' theorem allows us to describe the probability of an event taking into account other information we already know. It has a very simple mathematical statement. Remember that P A bar B is read as the probability of A given B. So Bayes' theorem says the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of B given A multiplied by the ratio of the probability of A over the probability of B. When talking about Bayes' theorem, we call PA and PB marginal probabilities and refer to PA as a prior because it is the probability of A happening before we knew B happened and represents our prior belief about A before we knew that B happened. Let's look at a simple example to make sure this is clear. Say we have an athlete who has tested positive for performance enhancing drugs. We know some facts about the test. Firstly, that it has 99% sensitivity. Sensitivity measures the proportion of positives that are correctly identified. So if 100 people using drugs take the test, we should get roughly 99 positive results. Secondly, we know the specificity is 80%. Specificity measures the proportion of negatives that are correctly identified. That is, if we give this test to non-users, roughly 20% of them will return a positive test. Another way to say this is that the false positive rate is 20%. Let's say the athlete has tested positive. We write down Bayes' theorem for our situation. We want the probability that the athlete is using drugs given that they had a positive test. Bayes' theorem lets us write this in terms of three other possible probabilities. The probability that they had a positive test given that you're using drugs, the probability that any athlete is using drugs, P using, and the probability to have a positive test. We can calculate each of the things on the right and therefore calculate the left-hand side. To calculate the denominator, we need the law of total probability. This says the probability of x happening is the probability of x given y times the probability of y plus the probability of x given z times the probability of z, where y and z are assumed to be the only two possible outcomes, so z is in fact not y. In our case, the law of total probability says that the probability of a positive test is the probability of a positive test if they're using times the probability they're using plus the probability of a positive test if they're not using times the probability of not using. Obviously, using and not using are the only two possibilities. Here we have to make some assumptions. Let's say we believe that half of all athletes are using performance enhancing drugs. This is our prior belief in the language of Bayesian statistics. Then we have to use the sensitivity and specificity information to substitute in the conditional probabilities and calculate the probability of a positive test, which comes out to be roughly 0.6. We can now calculate the numerator as well, using the sensitivity, specificity, and our prior to calculate the ratio. Pause here and make sure you understand all the numbers. According to this analysis, we should now be 83% sure that our athlete is taking drugs in light of a positive test, updating our prior belief of 50%. Because this test has a 20% false positive rate, the probability is not raised to 100%. Bayes' theorem shows how to use new information, in this case the positive test, to calculate how much more confident we should be in our beliefs. One of the interesting things with Bayes' theorem is that until you have some experience calculating these things, the prior probability does not change as much you might, as you might expect. 83% is more likely than not, but there's still a 1 in 5 chance that the athlete is not using drugs, despite our belief that 50% of all athletes are using them and the positive results on this fairly accurate test. We can see that the problem with this test is the high false positive rate. A test with 100% sensitivity instead of 99% would not really change the answer. If we want more certainty, we have to improve specificity and reduce false positives.